Welcome back to the synthesis phase of the orthographic drawing series. This instructional will cover some of the aspects of site analysis, specifically the observation and registration of measurable quantitative site characteristics, such as the path of the sun over the site and the prevailing winds throughout the year. The understanding of these basic characteristics will form an important aspect to our design response to the site. The solar study is perhaps a key environmental characteristic used in design as it affects both the thermal performance of buildings leading to human comfort as well as illuminating architectural form and shaping our emotional response to space. Though the way we manipulate and respond to daylight is subjective, the passage of the sun in any part of the world can be accurately predicted and mapped. Accuracy of information is important as well as the efficiency of our time in the field. Therefore, we will be using technology as best as we can and relying on smartphone applications to provide us with the necessary information. When transposing the sun path information onto our plans, we will need to develop a graphic way of projecting a reasonably accurate depiction of the sun's position and elevation on the plan. Here we have developed a simple projection of a hemisphere onto plan. The drawing on the top part of the slide shows a section through the hemisphere. We have divided the hemisphere into 180 degrees in divisions of 10. Because it is symmetrical, we are simply focused on the left-hand side of the hemisphere section only. From the intersection point of the radial lines with the perimeter of the hemisphere, we have projected down onto the x-axis of the plan. From the intersection on the x-axis, we have then drawn a series of concentric circles that represent the various elevations in 10 degree implement increments on the plan. In some senses, it is like a contour plan, but instead of heights, we are projecting angles of inclination. Here is the completed plan projection of solar elevation onto a hemisphere. We will use this when plotting the sun's position onto our plan. A copy of this plan projection is available in the course resources via Blackboard. The first piece of information we need to plot onto our plan is the position of north. We can use a traditional compass or a smartphone application to get this information. The tricky thing though is how to accurately plot the information onto our plan. In this instance we have tried to find a known point in space on our base plan and aligned our sheet of paper with that point in space. Ideally the point in space should have a straight edge. We have used the side of the building in our case and positioned the compass on top of the sheet and marked it on the location. It will be truthful to the direction of north but perhaps not millimeter accurate. However, it will be adequate for our requirements. In most instances, if we are working from a rough starting plan generated from web-based mapping resources, we can plot the direction of the north and use this step to check the accuracy of the north point. Now, for our purposes, this process we have just described is reasonably accurate. However, if we were doing this properly, we would also need to take into account magnetic declination. That is, the difference between true north and magnetic north. For Brisbane, the difference is plus 10.5 degrees. If we were to account for magnetic declination, we would then add 10.5 degrees to our direct projection. The positive value means that we add it to the east. We're not going to worry about magnetic declination in this instance, as it adds a layer of complexity that is unnecessary for a starting site analysis. But if you want to find out more, do a web search for magnetic declination and you can find out more. Once we know the location of north, we can then overlay the plan projection of the hemisphere onto our base plan and roughly locate it in the center of the page with the axis of the hemisphere aligned to north, south, east and west. With most sun path applications available for smartphones, we can project a sun path based on your current location using the phone's geolocation functionality. Most applications will default to the current time and date to project the sun path, but they will also allow you to set the time and date manually. The screenshot 
shown on the slide is the Sunseek application running on an iPhone and it is showing the sun path for April 22. We need to plot a spread of sun paths throughout the year onto our site analysis so we can get a good idea of the movement of the sun across our site throughout a year. We usually aim for a, a midsummer, midwinter and sometime in spring and autumn as ideal points of the year. For the workshop, we are required to plot the position of the sun for December 22, April 22 and June 22. We also need to plot the position through several times of the day. In this instance, we will plot the sunrise and sunset as well as a mid-morning 10am and mid-afternoon 2pm time slot. Working with the app and using our plan with the hemisphere, we can plot the approximate location of the sun in relation to the centre of the plan. Here we have recorded the elevation of the sun and the times and approximate locations of sunrise and sunset. The other key environmental aspect we want to record is the direction and approximate strength of the prevailing winds. This is not something we can observe on the day of the site visit as wind is variable. However, there are patterns that can be observed over time. The information about prevailing winds is available via the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and should be downloaded prior to observations on site. The pattern of wind over time are plotted onto what's called wind roses. Wind roses aggregate readings over a month and plot these onto a graph that indicates wind speed, strength and direction. Here we are looking at the wind roses for Brisbane during the month of December. The wind rose on the left is for the morning and the one on the right for the afternoon. It is important to plot the difference between morning and afternoon prevailing winds as there is usually a reasonable variation in the pattern throughout the day. Now, even though we can see patterns forming, the reality is that the winds are still quite variable. Our site analysis cannot represent all the variation without the information becoming overwhelming. Remember that the site analysis plan is intended to give us points of departure for our design. If prevailing winds become an important feature of our design, we should investigate it in more depth further into the design process. At this stage though, we are interested in the directions where the prevalence of the wind is the greatest. In this instance, wind coming from the north in the morning and from the northeast in the afternoon are dominant on the wind rows, so that is what we will plot onto our site analysis. We will continue with wind roses we have downloaded for April. Here, the dominant prevailing wind in the morning is coming from the south and in the afternoon from the east. The thickness of the lines indicate the strength of the wind, which are a bit stronger when compared to December. Finally, we would repeat the process for the wind rose in June. The dominant wind is coming from the southwest in the morning and from the west in the afternoon. Given that temperatures are likely to be cooler in winter, a strong wind from the west and southwest should be avoided in the winter time. Graphically, we then overlay the wind rose data onto the plot of the sun path we have just created. As we develop our site analysis, we will add more and more layers of information. It is important that we develop a clear graphic style that is simple to read as well as informative. There is an art to developing a clear and informative graphic language which requires a few iterations to get it right. Having said this though, once you have developed a good graphic style, you can reuse it for subsequent site analysis drawings for your future projects. Here we have used a simple graphic for the sun. The colour of the sun subtly changes between summer, spring, autumn and winter. The sun's elevation is written alongside in combination with the time of the day. The sunrise and sunset locations have been plotted and the times recorded next to them. The prevailing winds are also shown with subtle variation. Wind strength is indicated by the thickness of the wind arrows. A pleasant wind is shown with a sinuous line, whereas an unpleasant wind is shown with a jagged line style. Summer winds are shown with a darker blue colour progressing through to a light blue for winter. 
the combination of subtle graphic changes and colour all help with the efficiency and effectiveness of the communication and allow us to layer up quite a bit of information onto a single drawing. This now ends the instructional focused on the scientific recording and depiction of site qualities onto a plan. Be sure to watch any companion instructional videos associated with site analysis to get a full understanding of the process. Thanks again for watching.